The, the, the ship uh, has to complete at least one orbit around Earth, and sometimes propellant pumps are designed to pull the rocket in uh, about half an hour. The S-20 Starship prototype has been the topic of conversation for many months. But did you know that the next prototype is already gaining popularity and will be launching very soon? Yes, the S-22 or SN-2 is the next prototype that SpaceX is working on. But the question is, how ready is this prototype? When will it set out on its journey to space? What is Elon Musk trying to do here? Let's dive into these questions in today's video. Welcome back to Everything Elon, where we give you all the latest information on Elon Musk and his billion dollar companies. Don't forget to watch the video till the end, and also subscribe to our channel for the latest on SpaceX. When talking about modern and advanced rockets, you have to understand one key point, orbital flight. This means a spacecraft can continuously complete round trips of the Earth using Earth's gravitational force alone. And the all new Starship prototype, S-22, has achieved this milestone. We can see that Elon Musk is getting closer and closer to his goal. And what is that? No, not colonizing Mars, but with these spaceships, Elon Musk is moving towards an advanced network of satellites beaming down high-speed internet with global coverage. As we all know, Elon Musk pioneered the reusable rocket. Building a spaceship is expensive, and all of that money just goes down the drain after one launch. When analyzing the rocket industry, he saw this as an obvious flaw in being able to make space accessible and affordable. When he described the problem to his team, he said, Think of the rocket coming back to Earth like a pile of cash falling. It would be a good idea if we try to catch that pile of cash instead of letting it blow up. We all know SpaceX can land their smaller rockets. However, the S-22 is a much bigger spaceship, which means it is infinitely more difficult to land. It is a fact that Elon is a force of nature and does not quit. Here is how he is going to figure it out. With a lot of improvements on the initial versions, a Starship now has two stages in order to make this possible, the lower stage and the upper stage. The lower stage is called the booster and is mostly a constellation of Raptor engines, while the upper stage of the ship lands back on Earth after its launch. Elon Musk has done many test launches, and yes, most of them ended up getting destroyed and flamed up on the launch pad. But this new prototype, the S-22, is considered to make that possible. For this rocket, the ultimate goal of the Starship is to develop a rocket that can be used multiple times and can lift 100 tons of orbit. This prototype is powered by the Raptor rocket engines designed and made by SpaceX itself. This rocket version is the improved, more powerful and efficient second version, not the first version we saw in previous models. One big goal of SpaceX for the S-22 prototype is multiple usages in order to reduce the cost put into making these spaceships. And this will be done by making the ship that is the upper stage land back on Earth. What SpaceX is trying to do here is either land the ship on the pad or catch the ship in midair using the arms of the launch tower, like chopsticks. In the very same way, the booster, which is the lower stage, will fall off as the ship reaches its orbit, and then it will land back using either of the same two methods. The giant rocket, SpaceX's most popular one, was destacked. This was done four days later, and this rocket was used for Elon Musk's presentation. For the first time, the S-20 and the B-4 were separated. The S-20 is the previous prototype, and the B-4 is the booster and the upper stage of the S-20 was lifted and landed. In August of 2021, the S-20 and the Super Heavy B-4 were stacked for the first time. Just for a fit test, it was the largest rocket ever built and assembled, however, for just a little time. It was detached just one hour later. The detached S-20 was sent back to the SpaceX base for some finishes, and six months later, SpaceX completed one ship and three boosters cryoproof, and now it has again stacked the B4 and S20 together. This time we got to see something new. SpaceX used the chopstick to stack the starships instead of using the cranes SpaceX usually does. 
The arms lifted the 100-ton ship to a height of 100 meters, and then lowered the ship for a booster 4 to attach to it. And this resulted in a 390 feet tall rocket. On the 14th of February, yes, Valentine's Day, the SpaceX employees spent their day destacking the S-20 and lowering it to the ground. The next day, it moved to a concrete pad near the launch tower. This was probably done for the cryogenic proof test. But then, why didn't they test the S-20 and the B-4 all together? Well, only Elon Musk knows that. However, we know that the S-20 and B-4 have already gone through many tests, so it was only natural to test the two of them together. But they didn't. Elon Musk is very active on Twitter. He also tweeted a video of detaching the S-20 and the chopstick arms can be seen working. SpaceX built these prototypes using sheets, rolls, and steel billets to make the structure and the rings. For the nose of the ship and the whole upper dome, some fine water jet or laser cut steel sheets. These sheets, which look a little like pizza slices, are then welded together. The majority of the ship is made of rings of steel. SpaceX uses rolls of sheet metals. After cutting these sheets into sections, the steel is welded to make the rings. These rings are then stacked one by one on top of each other. The rings are then covered on the outside by other stiffer rings to add rigidity and to make the rocket even stronger. Once the basic structure is done, the SpaceX crew now starts creating the structural support, mounts for the avionics hardware, and passage for pass-throughs. For those wondering what avionics hardware means, it is the collection of batteries, wires, power, comms, plumbing, mechanical systems, and many more. Although SpaceX has been finishing off the individual sections of the S-22 prototype, it wasn't yet stacked and tested. And you see, it doesn't matter how complete and perfect the individual parts are until they are stacked into the complete ship. And this was stacked at almost the same time the S-21 was stacked. The S-21 and the S-20 components were left idle at the base for months while the S-20 was being tested. Now, the S-20 was detached and the S-22 tank section and the S-21 nose section were used to make a full Starship prototype along with the B-4. It's a guess, but SpaceX is probably focusing on S-22 as practice for the SpaceX staff. But it's confusing how SpaceX uses the S-21 nose section on the S-22 tank section instead of using the S-21's own tank and completing one prototype. Since November, SpaceX has received liquid nitrogen deliveries of roughly 6,700 tons and liquid oxygen of about 4,200 tons. If this average is maintained, the two tanks at the base could be completely filled by the end of February. SpaceX can finally do the first full static fires with the Super Heavy Booster prototypes. SpaceX can also attempt the first major wet dress rehearsals. But SpaceX would need a tank farm full of methane, liquid nitrogen, and liquid oxygen to set the S-22 prototype into orbit. Still, SpaceX is progressing quickly, and it is not much time until the S-22 will be set to launch. What do you guys think of the SpaceX progress? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss exciting videos about Elon Musk and his billion dollar companies.